Yep, we are recording. Yep, it just started. A little bit closer, please. Perfect. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing here? Just whenever you're ready. Hello, my name's Clarisabeth, and in my 10 plus years of crocheting, this is the first bikini I've ever made. So, you've never made a bikini, that's correct? Yes. And what made you decide to crochet the Shalia Tankini? Well, I didn't really set out in search of making a bikini, you know? It was more like I kept seeing Chelsea of Knitting Tipsy pack up, pack all these beautiful handmade bikinis for her vacations, and, and that reminded me of my own lack of bathing suits that I actually like. So with this in mind, when she posted a call out for testers for her Tankini, I, I just said yes. <laughs> So you have no bikinis or bathing suits that you actually like? Well, I have a vintage-like one that I really like. I think it's mm, like meant to mimic the 1950s trend. So it's a whole bathing suit, um, just a halter top, and it's got like little pants at the bottom. I really like that one, but what I don't like about it is that when you go to the beach and then you have to go to the bathroom, you kind of have to get undressed in the bathroom to be able to use the bathroom and... Uh, that makes me very uncomfortable. So what can you tell us about the Shell Yeah Tankini? Oh, I can tell you plenty about my first bikini experience. Don't mind me, I'm just lounging in my husband's office crocheting the top of the Shell Yeah Tankini. Now I only had to crochet this top once, but it was absolutely wonderful to crochet. On the other hand, I did rip back the bottoms of the tankini at least five times. I am not exaggerating. I just really, really wanted to get that perfect fit. And also, I did need two 100 gram skeins of yarn for this. back to Clarissa of the present but in terms of vlog she's Clarissa of the future so like I said in the beginning of the video this is a pattern well the shell yeah tankini is a pattern designed by Chelsea of knitting tipsy and yeah when she just posted a picture of the um, brown version that she made of it I, I knew I had to make a version of this bikini for tan or sorry tankini for myself and I learned a lot because it's my first bikini ever made right and um, whenever you're gonna make something for the first time it's very intimidating and you can make a lot of mistakes now the shell yeah tankini pattern is very special because in order to be as size or more like 
body inclusive as possible, it is a made to measure tankini. So what does that mean? That means that while you have information available on the amount of yardage that you're going to need based on what us testers used and the number of stitches and different body types that tested this um, shell yet tankini, you will need to measure your own body and then chain in the multiples designated in the pattern to get your best fit possible. So this can be a little intimidating if you, like me, have never crocheted a tankini, but mostly because you're not sure, like there's a little bit of hesitation between your own measurements and what numbers should I use to make this tankini. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience making the Shelia tankini. First things first, let's talk a little bit about my body type. I don't think my body type is um, particularly average. I have a long torso, I have long legs, and I um, have a small breasts, but my shoulders are a little bit wide and my waist, um, it doesn't really have an hourglass figure, but my hips are about 10 inches wider than my waist. So um, when it comes to choosing two piece or even one piece body suits, um, I have a lot of problems because I will typically need a small, depending on the company, for the top for my 33 inch bust, and then I will need a medium for my 29, 28 and a half, 29 inch waist, and then I will need somewhere between a medium and a medium 2.0 for my hips slash butt. Um, that measurement in the widest part, it's gone down a little bit, uh, but it used to be 41 in like 42 inches and now it's down to 41 and I believe that when I crochet the tankini we were at 40 and a half So there's been a lot of variation in my own body just in a couple of months really But while I won't give any trade secrets of this pattern away I will say that when you crochet a bikini for obvious reasons you need negative ease so a swatch is very highly recommended because you can see the stretch that your yarn is going to have. You can wet your fabric, see how it's going to behave, see how much coverage you can achieve with the fabric, and just play around with all of that. Because at the end of the day, if you have a very loose gauge, you can always line your bikini. There is no harm in that, and you can line it with maybe an old bathing suit that no longer fits. You can just cut out the little strips of fabric that you need and line it by hand. I actually haven't lined my bikini yet, but now that we're talking a little bit about yarn and gauges and all of that, let me show you the yarn that I used to make my bikini because it's not advertised as a bikini yarn, but that doesn't mean it cannot become a bikini yarn. So to crochet this Shell Yeah Tankini, I used Regia cotton, um, this is called Cotton Tutti Fruity. So it is um, colors based on fruit. It is a Regia self starping yarn. It is a mixture of cotton, polyamide, which is nylon, and of course some acrylic in there. So it's very stretchy and it is, as you can see, a little bit bouncy, which is what you need when you are working something that you want to work with negative ease. Now, even though Chelsea in the pattern recommends that you use a 2.75 millimeter hook, I know that my gauge tends to be a little on the loose side. So from the get-go, I went in with a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook and it worked up wonderfully. So I actually, this is my second ball. I had to buy a new one because I very naively thought, well, bikinis are small. I can crochet it with 50 grams. No, why would you think that? There's so many parts and components to a bikini and it is something that tends to be constructed, understandably so, in pieces. Because when you construct in pieces, you can actually reinforce certain areas, just like when you are sewing. And also, you can make sure that things kind of fit where you want them to. So that's a benefit from constructing in pieces. Now, um, after I crocheted the top of the tankini, which is the beautiful one that I am wearing, I quickly realized that I was not in fact going to have enough yarn to be able to crochet the bikini bottoms because I wanted a high-waisted bottom. So I went with a few repeats of the pattern for the top, uh, for the bottom band of the top. 
and I went for more repeats for the bottom for the top portion of the bottoms. Now, you can find more information on this in my Project Ravelry page, as well as my blog post for the specific repeats and all that, but you can see here just the basic shape of my bottoms, and you can definitely tell that I, 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 I have not woven in all my ends, and that is because I actually ripped this, um, the bottom part of my tankinis, I actually ripped them about four times trying to get a good fit. I wanted full coverage in the front and full coverage in the back. Now, as you can tell from the video, I didn't really achieve full coverage in the back and in the front, there is a little bit too much coverage. So that meant that when I went around with the elastic, I had way more fabric than I needed in my bottoms. So I pulled out the border of the elastic and I decided that I'm going to redo that but just like from the middle of the crotch up from my booty because I do need um extra fabric back there <laughs> now you might be asking since this was your first time crocheting a tankini what was the hardest part honestly I'm gonna say the hardest part of crocheting a tankini was trying to find a moment where I actually wanted to take off my clothes and try it on yeah uh that really was the hardest <laughs> Okay, jokes aside, while I did find it very hard to find a time of day where I could um, unravel my clothes so that I could try on my tankini in a way that I knew was going to fit, the hardest part for me was not doubting my intuition. So I know that my butt curves, right? It's, it's, it's curvy at the bottom. So I need more area back there than I did in the front. And I, I doubted that quite a bit. I was not sure how to approach it. And in the front, as you can tell, there's a little bit too much fabric because I really doubted the start from your hip points and decrease portion of this. I wanted a fuller coverage, but really starting from your hip points for the tankini bottoms would have been just perfect. And if you feel that tankinis aren't for you because of your body, because of this, because of that, no, I fully encourage you to check out the Ravelry project page or the Instagram hashtag, which I'll put right here for you. And I'll link the Ravelry page below because you can see all the different bodies, age ranges, coverage ranges that tested this tankini and be inspired to find one that works for you. Because quite honestly, I, I flip and loved it. I learned a lot from the experience. I learned a lot about working with negative ease and I actually learned more about my body and more importantly I learned to accept my body for what it is and not what I would like it to be like our bodies are beautiful they allow us to do so many things and of course um, I think making your own clothes is a way to honor that so now not only can I have a handmade wardrobe I can have a handmade be well still wardrobe, but it's more beach oriented. And of course, like the true rabid or avid crocheter that I am, I, when I had to purchase that second skein of yarn to complete this project, which by the way, I think I have about 40 grams left over still. Well, no, actually feels like 30. Yeah, I have 30 grams. Uh, I bought more. <laughs> yes, sirs, ma'ams, fellow humans, fellow crocheters, beautiful crafty people, I bought more. And I bought more of the same yarn range. So again, this is Regia Cotton Colors, and this one is Kiwi. So I think at the beginning I said it's Regia Tutti Frutti. No, I am sorry. Regia Tutti Frutti is the name of the um, this yarn color because it's meant to have a lot of tropical fruits. So papaya, bananas, oranges. The, the range is cotton colors. And this one's Kiwi which has gorgeous sh different shades of green. So we have like a forest green, we have a lighter lemony green, but still a bit earthy in those green tones, which I absolutely love because I've discussed this previously, but I think I'm entering my Witch of the Woods era. So very welcome. And you can see the self-striping. So yeah. This, as I said, is still 72% cotton, 18% polyamide, 10% polyester. I got this off the Laughing Hens website. They shipped to the US and it was very reasonably priced. I think each Regia 
uh, skein was $10, so they are 100 gram skeins. So I purchased two, of course, and what I'm trying to decide is if I want to make another Shelia Tankini or if I want to venture out into the wild, wild world of bikini making. So I do have a pattern that mom gifted me ages ago from a, well actually, it's a magazine issue of Simply Crochet, I believe, and there was a bikini pattern there. I'll put a picture here. So she gave me that magazine as a gift uh, because of that bikini pattern for a 12 days of Christmas. I think it was the last 12 days of Christmas that we ever made. Um, I'll put the link to that video in the description box below as well in case you want to do a Christmas in July. I don't know. You're welcome to though. So anyway, whoo, um, yeah, I bought this. I really like working with this Regia cotton color. In fact, I think this is my third make, with, well, second complete make, third planned make with Regia cotton colors because I made this tankini set and I also made my husband a pair of socks for summer in this. I greatly encourage you to try this yarn if you've never tried it. It's beautiful. If you're allergic to wool, this would work wonderfully. Um, I have knit a pair of socks for it. I'm not sure how a, well, that's a lie. I think a crochet pair of socks might be a bit too sturdy. Like that there wouldn't be enough give because it's a little bit lofty. It has, uh, does not say, uh, 459 yards in 100 grams. So actually it's got very good yardage. 429 yards in 100 grams for cotton and it's only $10 a skein. I consider that to be very affordable and I really, as I said, loved working with it. So yeah, I consider that with well within my price range of what I am willing to pay for yarn that I really like. So yeah, highly recommend this Regia. Now I haven't actually tested this tankini yet out in the wilds of the ocean but I rarely tend to get into the ocean because I have this thing once I get into the ocean and I get out I hate feeling the water drip down my body so um, I tend to want to leave because I, I don't like the feeling of just the wet bathing suit drying on you and also the sand sticks to you way more when you're you know wet Yes, that sounded wrong. But I will not edit it because it is truth. It is truth. So yeah, guys, this has been my Shelia yeah Tankini experience. I considered it a very positive one. I learned a lot and that is, that's very important. So not only did I learn, learn a new construction, but I also just learned how to manage my intuition and how to really trust that what I am feeling is valid because all body types are differently and we all prefer to dress our bodies differently. Um, so final notes on the Shelia yeah Tankini. I really like it. I really like that the stitch Chelsea has chosen for the band, the waistband at the bottoms, has a lot of stretch in and of itself. So if you're feeling a little bloated, you can still wear your Tankini because it's gonna stretch to accommodate that. And I really, really appreciate that because we all go through days where you know, we're feeling bloated or we just don't want things that are very tight fitting. So this has enough negative ease to be comfortable still. That's my takeaway. Thank you so much for joining me on this Shelia yeah Tankini adventure and I will see you very soon in my next video. Don't forget that the links to this pattern are in the description box below. You can find it on Chelsea's Ravelry page, which I am linking, and I am sure that she herself is going to be doing a video soon, so I will also link her YouTube channel in the description box below. Thank you so much, guys. Bye! If you want more Tankini content, head on over to Kate of One of a Kate's YouTube channel, and you'll find another Tankini vlog.